This will be a bit of an odd upside down video because I can't figure out how else to do it, I'm afraid. Um, in the last video I said about not drawing solid pencil lines right the way across, but just putting occasional offset dashes to mark the, the areas that you want to work between. And the reason for not a solid line is, I did that the very first time I did it, I drew a nice very clear pencil line all the way across as a guideline and put all my bricks in and then I discovered afterwards that when you look at the face of the bricks when they're on you can actually see that line, it will appear between each brick so it's like a little black dotted line running right across the front it's probably not noticeable to anybody but me but I could see it so I don't do that anymore, I just put these occasional lines in, pencil lines and I put them in different places so if they show up they're not at least at least they're not going to join up in, in some way. So as I said in the previous one, mark mark off what you're going to do in intersections, just the width of a ruler, by drawing lines, 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 bits of lines as guides. That will keep your horizontal lines level because you're going to work to that next line and stop there and fill in and carry on from there. Decide where you want a complete row of bricks to be, where it's important to you. Do you want a complete row of bricks sitting on the top of your trim or window or do you want a complete line sitting underneath your window, which of course would be the normal thing. doesn't matter so much when there's a trim, but if it was just, just a blank window, you really could do the complete line of bricks there. Though what I did do on one project, and it looked really nice, was put those vertical bricks in that you often see supporting a window frame so have a good think before you start where where it's important to you that there's a line of bricks in my case on this project it's been this board is divided with two trims it's like three sections of houses three floors of the house and each one is divided so it was important to me that I had a line across here that was a solid line and wasn't a half brick it didn't end up as a half brick so I started there put my lines in and I'm working that way down as you can see this is the bottom this end sorry this end down here is the bottom of the house and the house is going upwards that way so I am working kind of upside down in real life I'm working from this line here downwards so I've got my horizontal lines in to keep my bricks straight together on that line and that they will all then meet up again at the bottom when we get down to here. If you haven't got some sort of guiding you're going to find that you will run off on this space or this space. I'm not going to go through all that again because it's on the previous video but it is important you've got some direction. This video really was just to show you how I actually stick the bricks down. So I'm about to start on my next new section. Well, to be honest with you, I would be if I'd filled in all these spaces, which I haven't done. But if you imagine those spaces are now filled in, I'm ready to start on the next section and come down to this line here. So it's only a little way that I'm going down. So first of all, I'll put a ruler in. I can either rule a line or put a ruler in. It doesn't really matter, but I want to try and keep my vertical lines running straight as well as my horizontal lines and this is an opportunity to get that to happen so if I put a ruler in wherever it works best to try and keep that line straight gosh golly this line's already wonky um, that would be like that so I now know that my next brick is going to go on right next to the ruler there and will look like that. Then if I wanted to tidy up the next brick I would move that across to where the next brick is going to come keeping that line straight and I'll put that one in. So basically what I'm going to do now is just, I'm not going to stick these at the minute because it will take too long for you to watch but I will keep doing that Put that back again to there and put that one in and put that one back again to there and stick that one in. And what I end up with then, and as it happens this, this looks as though this one's going to land on this line pretty much, but that's just 
sheer coincidence they don't always do that so what I end up with then is this guideline of a single brick on each row in place and then I'll have the same over on this side and I'll do the same over on this side and I've got three lots running together I then go back and fill in all the spaces around it because these are cut bricks these, this isn't as simple as just shoving a brick in because it's more sorry the brick is more than the space so I'll show you what I do with that very simply there isn't an upside down and a right side up because they vary front and back the colours will vary and another tip don't try and create randomness let random be random put your pile of bricks beside you pick them up stick them down whichever way up they they land in your hand if you try to randomize them they end up then looking pretty much like a pattern it's a hard thing to do um, we don't have random brains we do have patterning sort of brains so don't do that just pick a brick up put it next to the space that you're going to fill put a little pencil mark where that other brick comes it's like tiling a floor or tiling a wall in real life take it away cut the bit off I'm off screen I know but that won't matter put your glue on and stick that little bit in place and there you go gap filled it's as easy as that you may find that you want to use a pair of tweezers um, for doing really teeny weeny bits you know if you find that that's a bit of a fiddle for you to handle if you've got very small pieces to put in you might want to do them with tweezers and put them in place use your tweezers and your fingernail that's again entirely up to you it's how you work best but I'll show you how I actually then put a brick down uh, the an easy way of having glue use to use your glue is get yourself a tile any tile will do this is a, a glass tile sample from B&Q four years ago and it's absolutely immaculate every time well not every time you finish with it but every so often when it's all gunked up put it in a, a bowl a sink and soak it just pour some warm water on it leave it there come back whenever you feel like it wash it it's as clean as a whistle it's brand new all over again this has had paint super glue all kinds of things on it it just comes back to being a tile as soon as I want to clean it up so it's a great clean up it's a place to put a little bit of paint or a little bit of glue so what I do for simplicity at the moment is I'm using up all kinds of little pots of glue as long as you're using tacky glue on these bricks doesn't matter what sort of tacky glue you use PVA glue of any sort wood glue tacky glue whatever it is that you've got and preferably stuff you want to use up so I've got little sample bottles here that I've had around for ages so I'm going to use these up and all I do because they're small is I stand it upside down and ignore this blob here because it's gone to waste while I'm talking to you but I stand it upside down and then when I'm ready for my next blob I just pick it up and move it on quickly and you'll find that obviously it's left a blob behind so you've got some nice fresh glue here to be going at so I pick up a bit of that with um, a toothpick just an ordinary toothpick and I butter the back of the brick so as you can see I am working one brick at a time you do not have to do it this way you could cover an area of your board with glue and just stick bricks on I don't do that partly because I find it doesn't save me that much time because I've got to fiddle about with all these cutout bits on, on most projects you've got cutout bits to do so it doesn't save that much time I might as well just um, do it the way I'm doing it and do it a brick at a time or some pernickety as you can see so I would like it to be um, as accurate as possible so I can fiddle about with one brick get it the way I want it particularly on this guideline this should be the place where you are being fussy because this is the thing that's going to guide all your finished product at the end of the day so as I said one brick at a time if I wasn't talking to you it goes down much quicker than this um, the area that you're looking at that's done here wasn't if I say a day's work it is today's work I mean I wasn't at it all day yesterday but the time I gave up to my project yesterday that amount of work was done in that time so if you if you think of it in that way 
two, four, six. So that's that sort of six goes at doing this for a short while. We'll get this done. It's nowhere near as bad as you think it is. A thousand bricks in a packet is terrifying. But um, when you actually come to do it, it's really not that bad at all. Again, I'm trying to keep the verticals and the horizontals. Okay, now what you do when you end up with bits of spare glue, you can obviously use your fingernail to get it off. You can use a toothpick to get it off. And the other thing that's really useful is one of these dental picks. Again, in America, you get these at a dollar shop for a dollar, but I have seen them over here now. They're coming into, you know, home bargains and places like that. So keep your eyes open for um, a set of dental picks or just a dental pick. This is like a double-ended thing. Must admit, I hardly ever use the other end for anything. But this hook is, is so useful for all kinds of things. It will pull things into place and it will clean up between your bricks. Another reason I don't glue the area and then put the bricks on is that most PVA has got quite a shiny finish on it when it dries. So you will end up with a sort of a shiny mortar um, peeping through, which I wouldn't be very fond of. So that's another reason I'm only doing it a brick at a time and cleaning up the glue from around the brick as I go. But all of that is super fussy, but I think it's probably better that you are looking at somebody super fussy doing the job and then you can work out which which things you might want to skip and think, well, I can't be bothered doing that. Rather than look at somebody who's already skipping things and then when you come to do it, you think, well, that's not as good a finish as I would like. So, okay, I think that's it. So it's a toothpick, um, PVA glue, a glass tile, uh, two, I think I said toothpick, sorry, toothpick, PVA glue, glass tile, dental pick is what I meant here, and a pair of small sharp scissors to be cutting your, your bricks with, and a couple of rulers, and I think you way to go. Okay, I can't think of any other way of helping you on these, just a case of plodding on with them. Okay, bye for now.